Hi everyone, in today's Watch and Learn episode I'll show you how to replicate the car design by using Elementor and L-Steroids for Elementor add-on. Pro version of Elementor is not needed. So the original car design is in the left hand side column while the right hand side is empty and I'm gonna use it for my replica. Before I start, let me briefly explain our objective. By looking at the car design, we can clearly tell that there are at least two layers, first of which is the mix of flat color and the photo and the second layer sits atop the background. Moreover, the top layer is supposed to house a few widgets and shut in or enclose everything by using the border or a frame. The only tricky part, especially when dealing with responsiveness, relates to the fact that the image in the background must be connected to the button. As you can see, one half of the button is kind of immersed into the photo and that very position should remain persistent at any viewport size. Other than that, everything is pretty much straightforward. As usually, you can download a training file whose link can be found in the description of this video. So let's start with the background. My empty column is supposed to be that first layer and I'll add the background color to it. As the fact that the background overlay is much more powerful than just the background, I'll rather use background overlay for that purpose. In Elementor, you have to define the background type first in order to make the background overlay panel show up. This is a must when dealing with the background overlay for columns, while well, everything seems to be alright when it comes to the section. It doesn't matter whether the background color does match the original design color, I'll just pick one from my list, I guess. The lightest one shall be fine. Now if you thought that I'll add the background photo to the column as well, you were wrong. I already said that the photo and button must be connected, but if I add the photo to the background column and the button elsewhere, connection between these two will be lost. It's gonna make much more sense once all the elements are on a stage, so please be patient for a while. The next step is to add the top layer. So I'll simply drag and drop the intersection widget that helps me to group and position all the content. I'll keep these two columns, but it's not very useful to have them one next to each other, right? So I gotta stack them vertically. And I can do that only if both of them are 100% wide. Unfortunately, Elementor does not allow me to do that, so I'm gonna use Breaking Bad extension that is a part of Steroids for Elementor add-on. It's free, Steroids for Elementor is free and you can download it from the official WordPress plugins repository. And this is how I can easily make both of my columns 100% wide, without any custom CSS code. The original design tells me that there's a margin all around the content layer. Hence the fact that you cannot define left and the right hand side margin of the intersection or any other section in general, I gotta highlight the background column and use it and use its padding instead, and which doesn't make any difference at the end. So 40 pixels should be enough, but in case not, you can easily can easily be adjusted once all the elements take their positions. Uh, one minor correction to the padding though. Because of the emblem sticking out of, of the content top, my top padding must be somewhat bigger, so I'm gonna add a few pixels over these 40, maybe 10 or 15, let's say 12. We'll see later, we can fix it up. Let's now add the emblem. That is nothing but the icon widget. And I'm gonna add the heading, divider widget, one text editor widget and the button widget. I'll speed all up to save some time, but as I said before, you can download a training file and play with it. You can maybe add different widgets or remove some of them, change typography, whatever you find suitable. It's a training file. Okay, the very last element is the photo. So I'll simply drag and drop the image widget to my second column and pick the photo from the media library. It doesn't matter which one, except maybe the one that is some sort of the color match to the main background. Now the question, how do I make the image bleed over the parent column boundaries? Well, quite simple. Take the knife and stab the screen a couple of times. Okay, please don't unsubscribe. That was a very lame joke. So forget about the knife. Let's rather play with margins, negative margins. 
Even though I hate them, I have no other option here. So in order to fill the gap or the padding of 40 pixels that I have added a few minutes ago to the background column, I have to balance it out by adding 40 negative pixels all around the image. And this is how I make the image look like it's part of the column background. In a visual sense, it rather belongs to the column background now, rather than being part of the, the intersection widget. However, I have to reduce the top margin a little bit due to the fact that only a half of the button should be immersed. Alrighty, the next step is to enclose the content with a thin black border. That's why I'm going to use or select the intersection widget. Then I'm going to go to the style tab and expand the background overlay panel. Once again, the background overlay. More precisely, I'll need the overlays extension that belongs to Steroids for Elementor add-on. So my plan is to set up the border of the background overlay by using the overlays extension. But why not just a regular border? Let me show you why exactly. So I'm going to expand the border panel and add that regular border temporarily. Okay. So obviously, the reason, because I'm not adding the regular border, is because the regular border falls behind the image and the original design says that the border should be atop the image, as you can see. So now I'll remove that useless regular border and get back to the background overlay. If I scroll a little bit down, I'll get to the overlays extension. Okay, here's a switch and I'll switch the extension on. I don't have to use any other feature but border and Z index. So I'll set up the thin black border, one pixel heavy, all around the intersection widget first and then change Z index to one. By adding the higher stacking order to the background overlay, I'm able to position the border atop the image widget. So that's the main reason. Alrighty, let me now add some space between the border and the content. So I'll highlight the content column and I'm going to add 20 pixels to the left and right hand side only because as you can see the emblem is supposed to bust out the border top while the bottom doesn't require any spacing. At the end I just have to handle the emblem itself. As you can see it is supposed to sit atop the border. It's one half must be outside and there's some space on the left and the right hand side. So let's see what it takes to make everything look right. First, I'm going to make the icon widget inline positioned. I have to do that in order to reduce the width of the widget to its actual size. Otherwise, the icon will cover the entire top border. That's why I'm using my positioning panel to position my icon widget inline. Now, the icon widget alignment no longer relies on previously set align to center, but rather on a parent wrapper alignment. The parent wrapper is the column, so that's why I'll highlight the column and set the horizontal alignment to center. Next, I have to move it up outside the border, and the only way to do that is by using the negative margin once again. Elementor adds some line height to the icon widget, as you can see, which is very wrong, so my negative margin has to be approximate. Okay, now I must add some space to the left and right and I'll use a little trick to do that. I'm not going to cut out the border because that's literally impossible. So the trick is to add the background and the padding to my icon widget. The background color must match the background color of the outermost column, of course, the color of the background and the padding can be added normally to the left and the right hand sides. All right, I guess that's pretty much it. Everything looks fine. However, we are dealing with the card element and cards usually never stand alone. Quite often you'll see two, three or even four of them standing one next to each other. So I'll create a new section and I'll duplicate my original card three times. And the most likely I'll change a couple of things in order to make my cards differ in a visual sense. Why exactly am I doing that? Well, first of all, I gotta be sure that my cards look fine when the amount of text is not equal. I mean, there's a chance that the heading takes 
two lines of text instead of just one. Same case with the summary text. So the point is to take everything into account before testing responsiveness. That's why I'll add more text to the cart in the middle now. I'll just type in something randomly, okay? You can see what I was talking about now. The other two cards now have some extra background color in a footer, which doesn't look right. If you ask me how I want it to look like, I'll say that there should be a gap, or better say that the card height must fit the amount of content. And now I can finally justify the usage of the background overlay for the outermost column. So I'll highlight the column and I'll go back to the target panel because there's my overlays extension, which helps me to manage the background overlay size, position, border, etc. etc. This time, I obviously have to reduce the height of the background. The only question is how much? Let's just say that the height oscillations won't be that big, maybe like two lines of text, plus one extra line of the, of the heading text at most. My guess is around 20 to 30 percent of the total height. So I'll reduce the height for let's say 25 percent, but in case more is needed, you can always fine tune. At the end, I can copy the style of my first column and apply to other two columns by using base style shortcut rather than going through the background overlay settings for every column instance. Now that I have everything ready, I can test my cards in responsive mode. Let's start with the tablet. Obviously, these three cards don't look right in a viewport size that big. Even if I reduce the padding of the outermost columns, I could save like, I don't know, 50 to 60 pixels, which is not enough. So let me quickly reduce the padding to 20 pixels. So you can see, so you can clearly see what exactly I'm talking about. It's going to be much easier to understand that there's no way to keep these three columns side by side on 768 pixels wide viewport. So are there any other options? Well, the option one is to collapse the columns completely and let them sit one atop another. That's basically identical to the expected layout for mobile devices. And if I do that, no further adjustments will be needed for a smaller size viewports. Some of you may find that option just fine. However, I want to show you something else too. So the option two, number two would be to keep one of these cards full width and the other two side by side. I can use the Breaking Bad extension again to create that kind of arrangement. In that case, my first column should be 100% wide, while the other two will be 50% each. I am aware of the fact that by making one of the columns wider implies more importance, but that's nothing but an option. The final choice is yours. Breaking Bad allows me to control the alignment of the columns inside the section, which means I can center them. And if I do that, and in order to maybe eliminate the importance factor, all of the columns can be 50% wide aligned to the center. Okay? This is how I can drop out one of the cards, but if I want to shift one or make it stand out, I'll simply change the width of the column to something greater than 50%, which makes the chosen card too wide to have a neighbor. Just in case, if there's a need for some sort of column's rearrangement, the column order option is here to lend a hand. The logic is pretty much straightforward and says that the lower the number, the greater priority. For instance, if I want to shift the last column to the leading position, I have to enter the number one into the column order. If the second column must to stay in the middle position, number two should be used, logically. And finally, number three becomes the column order of the last column. That option is responsive, which means that the different column order can be applied per device. Very useful. Anyhow, let's just quick check our cards in the mobile view. I guess all I have to do is to make all of the cards 100% white. No need for any changes in typography or padding. Everything looks just fine. Yeah. So this is obviously the last step in this video tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. I hope that you ended up watching this video with a bunch of new ideas. 
just to mention that I'm preparing another video on how to build the perfect website header, so don't forget to subscribe. Please visit my Gumroad shop and find something for yourself. This is how you help me keep this channel alive. Check out video description for more useful links, including the training file. Stay well, peace and love.